The following podcast contains language and themes that some people may find offensive. But don't blame us. We didn't vote for them. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to That Was The Week That Was, Was It? The podcast that likes to say yes. Joining me for this episode is Emmy Weber, as usual. Hi, Emmy. Hello. How are you? I've got really bad acid reflux this evening. We can edit that out when yeah, things if happen. If I start it, making horrible noises. Yeah, that will definitely go. Or yeah. I could I could make them louder, who knows. Yeah. Um, well, our guest for this episode is an actor that I think has appeared in everything. It seems that way. Um, so he's continuing the tradition by appearing on this podcast as well. It's the wonderful Alex Lowe. How are you, Alex? Very well, thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm so much better to see your face. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's been a while. It has been it really a while. I, I'm uh, trying to do all sorts of things at the moment for my tour, which I'm doing with Lewis McLeod. I know he was a guest with you. Oh, long yeah. Ago. Love Lewis. So we're doing a, a show at the end of the year, and it really feels like it's still, you know, January is still cold and not much happening. Mm-hmm. And um, to sort of mend the roof and get everything ready for when things start kicking off again. So to just get on with it. And I've had a lovely new office built at the bottom of my garden where I can come in and it's the loveliest thing to go to work and, you know, go into separate space and yeah, sort of I bet. do your I stuff bet. and put the heating on. Fuck it. If I want to have the heating on, I can. That's lovely. My, my place. Do what I yeah. like. Do what you want. Take your trousers off. It's all good, isn't it? Take, put them on. Yeah. Put them oh, on. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. tell me when I don't have them off. <laughs> it's lovely. So Alex, we're, we're a, I've got to say, we're a fan of many of your characters um, that you've done. Um, Clinton Baptiste, obviously, as you mentioned. Barry from Watford, of course, uh, just, you know. Um, but I, we have a soft spot for some of your more obscure ones. Um, and um, like your turn in my favourite sitcom, House of Fools. I thought that was a brilliant, oh, yes. brilliant moment. That must have been a fantastic thing. Um, when you played Dr. Watson in the Peter Serafinovich show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I... It lingers, that one. <laughs> I was always really sad about the Peter Serafinovich show because it had so much potential. Mm. And oh, there was yeah. a lot of talk about the subsequent series. And I think part of the problem was it uh, it went on after... Do you remember that Vivian Vile thing? It was called mm. Vivian Vile. Yeah. And it was um, Jennifer Saunders playing who I assumed was my old agent, Vivian Claw. Uh, and I think it was supposed to be a kind of very monstrous, slightly scary agent, which she is. Yeah. Hello, Vivian, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> and um, I think what happened was it wasn't a great hit. And I think we suffered because we came on straight after it. Yeah. And so it sort of died a bit of a death. I mean, we've, we've binged that series yeah. so much. Every we now and then it. it comes yeah. back now and Absolutely still love it. it. Yeah, lovely. Um, and also I want to mention as well, the thing that we, has actually reoccurred in our lives quite recently for some reason due to a YouTube suggestion, and then it snowballed from there, is um, when you played Andy Murray <laughs> and, and oh, Judy God. Murray on the Christian O'Connell show. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I used to do loads for Christian O'Connell, loads, tons, yeah. and it was the, always the most scary thing because uh, you go to bed at night and sort of think, oh, I've written a few gags. I'm, I tell, I'll do it first thing in the morning before the show and keep it nice and fresh, which means, I don't know you've had this, where you'll just spend the whole night going, oh, oh God, have I missed it? I've got to get Oh, yes. God, have I missed it? That alarm clock's got to come. Oh, God, I've got to think of something funny, and sort of gags go around your head all night in yep. your sleep. You wake up in the morning thinking, what was that joke I thought about three in the morning? And sure enough, it's absolute shit. You know? <laughs> and, uh, so it was always a bit frightening, that, and never particularly well paid. Yeah. The worst time I've had something like that, I did, um, well, you've done it as well, uh, Jake Yap's Sunday morning yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that, and I didn't sleep a wink. Not a wink. I know. It was just well, you awful. don't want to be terrible, do you? No. Well, I was, unfortunately. <laughs> but, I, you know, I don't... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So sure imagine what it would have been like if I'd have slept, you know. Um, oh, God. But, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. we've all... We, I mean, uh, we, we both did John Holmes's show as well. You did the... Oh, um, yeah. yeah. The, I was yeah. a caller on that. You were one of the callers on that as well. And... That's right. Yeah, John oh, Holmes's show. Oh, good times. Yeah. Good times. Good, good times. times. But anyway, we're yeah. not here to talk about past romances and what have you. We're here no. to talk about your week last week. So, yeah. I mean, as an overview, was it a strong week? Was it good? 
Well, it was really uh, absolutely amazing, Alex. And I honestly thought when, when you got in touch with me to do this, I honestly thought someone had given you the tip off that I'd had the most incredible week mm. because, um, and I think it's probably safe to say this now because this will be out. But on Monday, this is the most amazing thing. Everyone you'll remember, I don't know when people will be listening to this, but currently we're sitting here waiting for something called the Sue Gray report yes. to come out. Uh, about the parting at Downing Street. Oh, yeah. And I thought you might have heard this from Lewis McLeod because I was telling him my mum, uh, through some circuitous route, she used to work at Harrow Social Services and she knew Sue Gray oh. before she was involved with the civil service. Wow. And n- not a word of a lie, on Monday, um, my mum came over because she's, I mean, she's quite an elderly woman now, but she came over uh, around about lunchtime. It's always a bit difficult because I've always got work to do. And she's always got, oh, I've got, I want to talk to you about this with my laptop doesn't work. And, you know, the blind mm. leading the blind. I don't know what I'm doing, but she always has something. And she came and she said, I've got something I want to talk to you about. I thought, oh, geez, I've got work to do here. And I'm trying to write my stuff with Lewis. And she, the most incredible thing is that she uh, is a friend of Sue Gray, particularly Sue Gray's husband. She knew quite well, mm. uh, who also worked at social services. And she had... Um, I don't know whether it wasn't the actual thing, but she had a sort of template of some of the stuff that was going to go oh. before the civil service. Not not the actual finished report. No. But it's something that has to go through a committee, apparently. I think it's a bit of a cheat. You know, you want it to go straight, you know, yeah. to the the people. But it had to go through a number of checks. Mm. And she had it, my mum had it there on this laptop, which rarely works. Wow. And um some of it I didn't really understand, and some people I didn't really know their names. And the reason I can tell you now is because it's obviously out. It's out. Yeah. I think by the time you get this now, it, it'll be out. Hmm. But bloody hell! Really? Some of the it's unbelievable because I I've never voted for the Tories, no. and my mum is a bit of a Tory, you know, always a bit of a Daily Mail reader. Old school. And she didn't think there was anything wrong with it. And she's showing me the stuff of foothills of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Liz Truss, mm. you know Liz Truss? I'm aware of her work. Yeah, Foreign Secretary. Yeah. The, uh, now, I didn't really understand this, but there was there's some talk in this thing that I read, and whether it's in the finished report or not, I don't know, mm. that she had been uh, something like, it said something about socialising, by which I think they mean drinking, mm. from about 3.30 in the afternoon, right? right? So it says it's got a sort of timeline thing, and it says Liz Truss arrives 3.30, right? Yeah. Um. 4.15, something about music, music. And it's all very vague and it's all very coded in a sort of, yeah. God knows, civil service language. But from what I gathered from this thing, uh, Liz Trust turned up about 3.30. Some sort of music arrives, whether it's a portable system or, you know, maybe there was that talk about them bringing all the booze in on in those suitcases. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And then it goes, um, 5.25, Liz Trust. And it says something like on table redacted. Oh. And Liz Trust is on the fucking table. And I can only assume, I don't know if it's out in the garden, but this, it, I mean, I'm reading it. Liz Trust on table, uh, 520. And do you know, um, do you remember Normski? I do, Normsky, yes. Normski, the, yeah. uh, he was a DJ, what, the yeah, you, late you, 80s, what, early what 90s. Call it, Death 2, was it on BBC 2? Yeah. Did he do that? He yeah. apparently, it says something about, because his real name's Norman. I know he's a friend of mine on Facebook, Norman mm. something or other. Uh, and it says he was operating music or something. Really? Norman oh. something or other. And I thought, well, that Norman thingy, that's that's Normski. Yeah. So as far as I can tell from this fucking report, 3.30, booze comes in right. with Liz Truss. Five, 520, she's on a table dancing. That's what I read. <sighs> That's what I read. I, it and uh, wow. then it says something about snacks. Um Twiglets coming in, all this stuff. Mm. And then it says um, 625, Dominic Raab. Um, you know that it says something about rowing, which I've, you remember, oops upside your head that they used to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and I want to yeah. do it when I run in one day, good day. Yeah. I'm standing yeah. on the I have, floor. I have flashbacks on my 18th birthday of that, yeah. Yeah, it says something about rowing. Liz Truss on a table and Dominic Raab doing oops upside your head down. Yeah. That's what it read like, what, what, Alex. I'm now, not an expert. Was Dominic Raab on his own doing the rowing? Well, hold on. Have a look. Because otherwise, there's a social distance yeah, thing going on there. 
That's not how you do it as well. No. What about if someone's... Is he doing I've a one-man diagram conga? here. I just, I just quickly did a diagram of what I thought it was. Right. If someone's in front of you, say, yeah. and you're doing... Well, presumably, when you do the bit of the song, that when you lean forward... And you remember, it went side to side. It yeah. does, yes. As well. Yeah. The bit moving forward, I imagine, is slightly more contagious than, than doing the side to side. I mean, yeah. that's what I've drawn anyway. I mean, I don't know how accurate that well, is. Looks... But... Well, you end up in the same head space, don't you? Like, so they breathe the... Mm. Mm. the breathe the bit. I mean, sideways. And if you sort of, presumably, yeah. if you're following any kind of COVID rules, one would fan one way and the other the other way. That, that's quite a, you know, quite an impressive drawing you've done there. It really does look like Dominic Rabb. 6.35, mini snacks, burgers, etc. You know there's mini burgers? Well, like the sliders. People are really pissed up. Yeah. And they're, and it's sort of the mini burgers come round, just to take the edge off chucking up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it goes, it says something about mini fish and chips. Sometimes you get them at posh weddings. Don't you? Oh, mini like fish and chips in a round cone. In a thing. cone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these people are... are you know, they are actually paid by us. These are, you know, um, a public servants. Unbelievable. So that's what I did on Monday. And I said to my mum, you can tell Sue. I mean, I know Sue from, like, you know, when we were growing up and stuff. She was, I mean, she's quite, she'd get on a bit herself now, Sue. Yeah. And I said, you can tell Sue that I'm disgusted. And the sooner this gets out, the better. Now, has it come out? No, it hasn't. No. We're still As waiting. we speak now. No, we are still waiting, aren't we? We are mm -hmm. still waiting. 7.25. Um... Carrie sent out for fags. 20 Marlborough Lights, 40 Lambert and Butler Gold, Peter Stuyvesant, king size. Wow. So she's going out, presumably with that fucking suitcase, oh. to get a load of uh, a load of fags and that from the corner shop. 825, Gak question mark. Oh. Yeah, I mean, someone's doing the old having a bit of beak, yeah. presumably in the toilets there. Unbelievable. Gak. Cocaine. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah, and that if you want to vote for these people, you go ahead. But I will not. I can't. I, I'm. I'm very surprised that this report is taking so long to come out. I guess. I mean, it's all there in black and white, isn't it? I mean, we're not going to mostly get... white. Mostly white by yeah. the sound of things. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Unbelievable. So anyway, this was all fine, and then the next day. Can I get move on to Tuesday? Yeah, let's move on to Tuesday. Because on it. Tuesday, right, my wife, um, I told my wife about it. She walks the dog on a Tuesday. Mm. And she came back, and I've been sitting there in the kitchen with my trousers off, as always. Mm -hmm. Of course. And I was reading this thing, right? What do you think that means? Plumbing, question mark, toilet blocked. Mm. Then it's got there, gove, question mark. All I can assume is Michael Gove has overdone it on the cone. Yeah. And the touch of what you've got, Emmy, with the old gastric enteritis. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, he shit a brick and blocked the fucking toilets at the Teddy Downing Street. For, for the record, I haven't done that. What, a Downing Street? <laughs> it's just the acid ref reflux. I haven't shit a brick today. <laughs> Well, okay. This, uh, strictly speaking, this doesn't say Dominic rather shit a brick. Okay. I imagine Sue Gray wouldn't put that in the report. <laughs> yeah, that's she... my interpretation. She's put block toilet gove question mark. I mean, they're going to shit a brick when this comes out. My God, are they? Let's hope so. Yeah. I mean, will they just kick it, kick the shit into the long grass? Or, <laughs> or is, question. Is it possible that gove blocked the toilet in some other way though? Because you know what he's like with mountains of gack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe his glasses fell in. It's something simple like that, maybe. Well, I mean, I, I would have said so if I didn't read on page seven. Michael Gove has blocked the Kazi with a massive dump. Ah. Now, yeah, if that's, that makes yeah. it to the Commons, yeah, I will be amazed because that that quite frankly reduces the dignity of government in this country. Michael Gove blocks the toilet with a massive dump. I mean, you'd expect, I mean, quite honestly, I would expect, <laughs> and I don't think there's anything wrong, I would expect a, a a government, people who are in charge of running the country, the educated people, yeah, to perhaps couch these in slightly more, what can I say, anodyne, uh, uh, public-friendly terms. Mm. Yeah, look. Carrie chucks up 
on new carpet in bathroom. Well, right now, we paid for that. We did. For that carpet. We did. Boris slips on it, falls in shit on shag pile. Now, whether that's carries or goes, I don't know. But if that is the level, Alex, do you understand? If that's the level of what we're dealing with, it's no wonder the country's gone to the dogs. I didn't know it? that they were doing things like that. Yes, they are doing things like that, Emmy. Yes, they are. I mean, if you went in there with your gastro problem and you had, let's just say, for, I mean, what, what Sue Gray calls in this report, an accident in mm. inverted commas, mm. there'd be some flunky to tidy it up, my darling. Mm. You know, someone would do that. You wouldn't take any responsibility for yourself. I'd feel bad, though, because I'm... Yeah, that's the kind of person I am. Yeah, I'd feel I bad. know you would, and you're a decent, law-abiding citizen. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you look on page eight here, it says something about them hiring, I assume they hired it, a chocolate fountain. I don't know whether that's a reference it's, to Gove. It sounds like a... Or Carrie, or whether yeah. whether it is actually was a chocolate fountain. I mean... It could be anything, isn't it, at it, this point? could yeah. be anything. It's just escalating. It doesn't bear thinking about, really. No. So that was Tuesday. It's chocolate fountain um, in, in, like, you know... I don't, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think no, about it. No, no. Well, someone's going to have to think about it. Someone's going to have to pay. It's not going to be me. No. So when my wife came back, I just said to her, I'm, I'm taking a day off. I'm ready enough. Do you know what I did in the report? What? Really? That's what I did with it. Nice. That's what I did with it, mate. Is that is that why it's delayed? Or is it... they got well, I assume they they have others. So I can't imagine I've they don't know I've got it, Alex. Yeah. They don't know I've got it. And if Sue Gray, you know, if it were to get out that she give it to my mum who came round mm. with her laptop problems and somehow I had read I mean, who am I? Who am I? I don't know. I don't know these people. Didn't no. vote for them. No. You no. Know. It is. But still you get what you vote for. You deserve it. That's what you're going to vote for. It makes it makes you so frustrated and sad, and I can't think of a worse. I've still a couple of days. It's, it's insulting. Like I was walking around Lidl in a mask on my own. Yeah, yeah, and, and these people are shitting all own. over down yeah. Shag yeah. pile. That's I mean, I, 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 oh. during that time of that, what was it? May twenty twenty one was it? That we're talking I about. Eighth of May was it? Yeah, That's the yeah. big one out in the garden. Well, let me tell you, on that day, I went to see my grandma at Northwick Park Hospital. I wasn't allowed in. Mm. And when I was eventually allowed in later on in the afternoon, I had to stand with my arms through what was basically plastic sheeting. She was wheeled up and, and I could, from about two foot away, shout, Meanwhile, this lot, they're flinging their feces around 10 Downing Street. Dominic Rab's doing his bloody oops up outside your head. Inside your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a right old piss up. They're all on the fags. So just, it's disgusting. God, it just makes you. I just. I, I, makes I'm, you I heard. I heard rumours about it. I heard like whispers on Twitter and stuff. Like people yeah. you know, saying like, "Oh, behind closed doors, they do this and that." But oh, they do. Oh, shag mm -hmm. pile in the bathroom is the one thing. Yeah. That who can is... afford that in this country? No one. Oh, God, you just want to so that it. was Tuesday. That was Tuesday. Mm. That was Tuesday. What was Wednesday like? Well, I what as I said to you on Tuesday, my wife walks the dog, but on Wednesday, I went out. Um, I, you know where I live out near Watford, yeah. lovely fields out, it's sort of green belt, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I uh, I took the dog out, and there's another. There's a guy there, and I think he's a magistrate. Right. Uh, I won't say his name. I think it's Derek. It begins with a D. Okay. I won't say anyone that. Okay. He's a local magistrate, and he's got a dog called Whiskey. Whiskey. Now this dog is very, very unfriendly. Mm. Very unfriendly. And Whiskey, it's a sort of I don't know. It's a cross between a sort of Labrador and a Alsatian, but it's oh, it's got yeah. You know, it's got a little bit of something about... It's got something about... A bit punchy. Yeah, I know the type. A little bit vicious. I know the type, yeah. And my lovely dog, who is a rescue and quite timid, beautiful white, beautiful coat, beautiful coat, lovely, soft, very gentle, a lot like children. Mm. When she first came to us, very, very friendly and trusting with other dogs, but mm. 
you know what happens. That you soon learn. Just like being in the playground. Yes. Not yeah. everyone is that nice. No, that's right. Wise up. That's right. And whiskey is. I don't know what the technical term is. I like to call it a right bastard mm. in the animal world. I think that is. I'm sh- actually, that's the that technical the term. term. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that bloke what... from Nasdaq or whatever yeah. it is who Boris Johnson helped out of um, yeah. Afghanistan. He wouldn't Super call it Nasrock. Supervec definitely calls it. Right them. bastard. Yeah, right yeah. bastard. bastard. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this whiskey creature has gone for my dog, right? Mm. And the magistrate is doing very little about it, which, quite frankly, for someone who. He's been in, he's a local JP. He understands the bylaws of this country. Yeah. If you are, you've got a dog which is potentially dangerous, put it on a lead. Yeah. Of course. It's the rules. So whiskey's gone for my dog. And I get a little bit shirty with this bloke. And I pull out of the bag the one thing that I, I've actually promised myself I wouldn't say because I wasn't sure it was him. I said, What about the dogging? Right. Oh, I've seen the geezer up um, near Grimsdyke car park, just yeah. looking out over Harrow, and I'm sure it's him. Really? I said, "What about the dogging?" I've gone like that. I'm so bloody annoyed, and I swore I wouldn't do. It. And he, oh my god, he looked mortified. Really? Absolutely mortified. Oh, yeah. And his wife turned around. He says, "What dogging? Oh, you said you won't do any more dogging. No Ooh. more dogging. It's, I've told you about the dogging. You know." Oh dear. And quite honestly, I was embarrassed. I felt bad, but mm. I was so furious, you know. Mm. What gives you him away? You were going to give it up. You were gonna... What gives it away? Yeah, in the dog. Is he wearing... Well, when I saw him p- pushing his ball bag against that wing mirror is what really <laughs> gave it away. Oh, uh, I thought he was wearing the wig while he was out, you know. I, w- I, I, I wouldn't put it past him. Well, maybe not. I wouldn't put it past Some him. Some people go for that, don't they? Yeah. They really do. And then I, I was so, I was felt so bad, mm. and um, what well, felt sorry for her uh, really because uh, I don't know uh, what she knows about it. Yeah, I mean, I've got one question though. Um, mm. What, what were you doing there? Oh, what the dogging site? Yeah. Well, it's right next to the Cases Altered pub. I like a drink. Is that wrong to have a drink? That is no, the car park for the Cases Altered pub. No, that's fine. I don't. I don't think that. I mean, if, I'm, not su- if, I'm not suggesting. All I anything. want to do is park my car. Yeah, I'm not suggesting uh-huh. anything, Alex. I'm, I'm not. I just, you just say that you know where there's smoke. No, I'm not. I would. I'm not involved with dogging in the slightest. But all I'm saying is, I saw this guy. It was a giveaway. It was a dead giveaway. Mm. You're right. He should have worn the wig. He had a gavel. Oh wow! Well. And he was whacking himself with the gavel oh. the whole time. Oh dear! Asking people to swear on the Bible. <laughs> you know. Bible in one hand, knob in the other. Yeah, um, it was a dis- it was disgusting. That's a that's a bit that's a bit much, it's, isn't it? I find it a pain when you're just trying to get back to your car and you have to wait for them to move, so you got the space to open your door. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They can be inconsiderate. Well, this is the problem. I, you know, I've got this old Vauxhall uh, Mariva, mm. very temperamental, very temperamental. And as I got in the car, I tried to, you know, it, it you. You have to press. Oh, to cut on the story short, you have to press the clutch down to get the bloody thing to start. Right. Okay. I don't. I don't even. I don't even remember that being part of the design when I got it. It seems to have developed this whole. <laughs> Consequently, the lights are very dim, and they come on very. Before I know it, the bloody lights are flashing. Oh man! As I'm trying to start the car, you don't need that. I was surrounded Ooh. with a variety oh. of, yeah, JPs, oh. magistrates, policemen, ex-policemen. Mm. Um. People of all solicitors, yeah. school teachers, headmasters, yeah. all the people, Poor all of them, <laughs> uh, all of them. the ex-footballer who, yeah. um, who yeah. got involved with. At this point, I'd like to point out, <laughs> not <laughs> were there, but they could have been. This <laughs> was. It was. <laughs> you don't know. What's not there? I'd like to make that clear. But all I'm saying is, there were a variety of doggers and doggies. Who made their way to my car? Look, I want you to get home. Of course, I'm not interested in a variety of open air sexual activities. No, I'm not interested, Alex. No, no. no. So when you, when you say was... when you say doggies, it sounds you know quite cute. The doggies, <laughs> yeah, the doggies. It doesn't sound quite cute. The doggies, like they have in the American prairies. Yeah, those yeah. ones. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, thus far, the week has been full of drinkers, time wasters, and perverts. Did that? Uh, did Derek just get out of there sharpish then after you said that? Or well, this is the thing: the moment his wife started to get cross with him, he got turned on. Oh, yeah. this is how the you know this is how these people operate. Mm. Oh, I've been naughty. He's going, I said, don't mind that. Get the dog off my dog. I've been naughty. I said, he's grabbing hold of her tail. Mm. Oh, come on, let's get home, Derek. You've been ever so naughty. I said, oh, I'll say you've been naughty. You're on bloody rate payers' money. You know. She's not helping. She really is not helping there, he is was, she? He was, and he's, he's like, oh, what's the safe word? He goes, what's the safe oh. word? What, what was it? it? Should it should be whiskey. Oh, I'll tell you what it was. What yeah. was it? What was your guess? If it was whiskey, then he could call the dog back. If his safe word it wasn't, was that would get confusing. Yeah, yeah. You don't want the dog coming in the room every five the minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the worst yeah. opportunity. Whiskey, you know what it whiskey, was? go back, go back. Help me. Do you know what it was? What? Do you know what it was? What? You know what? what? Soda. Soda? Soda. Okay. Yeah, soda, which, once again, with whiskey, that could be a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, what would yeah. you like to drink? Whiskey <laughs> and soda. Oh, you had enough? No, just a whiskey yeah. and soda, you yeah. know. You couldn't you couldn't do that, could you? You couldn't no. do that. But it's all thought out, that's the problem. But, you know... Is uh, is your dog okay? My dog's all right. My dog's all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit shaken up about the people banging on my bonnet of my car. Yeah. Naked, yep. bare bottoms, the lot, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to wash your car? It's a good point. I haven't washed the car. No, you want to do that. Yeah. That is a good point. You do that. You got to do that. I mean, who knows? I mean, it's all very well complaining about the lack of PPE in schools and Dominic Raab doing oops upside your head. But I imagine a bare bottom on your car bonnet is very, very contagious for yes. COVID. There's COVID all over that. Yeah, you don't know what he's going to catch off that. No. Yeah. There's, all, there's all manner of COVID being wiped on my windscreen. On my bumper and on my chin by the end of the <laughs> It's a cozy it hotspot up there. <laughs> on the sunroof. Yeah. It's it's it's, a, it's honestly, you don't want to go near that sunroof. God. Yeah. Unbelievable. And the car's up from OT soon, I imagine. Yeah. It's not gonna get through its bloody not. MOT, is it? It's not gonna pass anything. Sorry, sir. Have you had a mask on this car? What? We found COVID on some buttock marks on the front. It's a bit sticky. Well, do I? What do I fail on? Well, you know, the brakes are sticking. The, yeah, yeah, the brakes are stinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's disgusting. So, so that was that was your Wednesday, was it? That was my Wednesday. That was your Wednesday. So, so far, your week's just been full of obscene people. It really has, and I, I've got to tell you, I mean, I'm sick to yeah. death of it. Okay, so. <laughs> what about Thursday? Was Thursday any better? Was it Thursday? Oh, well, Thursday. I mean, you know, Thursday. Thursday was lovely in comparison. Um, oh, I've been good. waiting for the report to come out all day. I've done very, very little. Mm. Um, what did I do? Uh, it was only God. It wasn't long ago. Now this is something. I on on Thursday. Do you know um, William Shatner? Oh yes, mm. very well. The Star Trek guy. Mm. I've been looking at some of his photos online that he took up in. Where did he go? He went just past the moon, didn't he? Did he go with Bezos? He went, he went very high. Other... He went very, went very, high. very high. That's yeah. I think that's the technical term. Yeah. With um, Elon Musk. That's right. Yeah. And if you go online, this morning I was reading a thing. Uh, no, it wasn't it. I think it was on TikTok. You know, on TikTok, mm. this is true. This my wife is an English teacher. She's very, very bright. And occasionally she'll say, well, have a read of this. Or first thing in the morning, she'll be getting the Guardian up on Facebook or something. And it's all really worthy stuff. I mean, she'll be banging on about inequality or something like that. Mm. And I'll be on TikTok looking up Sasquatch um, <laughs> footage. Yes. <you> know? <laughs> yep. And it's wasted on me. And she'll say, I've got a fascinating thing in our time with Melvin Bragg I was listening to. I'm like... It's just like white noise when she starts all that. And it's like, oh, fucking hell. Tell me about the UFOs. I'm like, because if you go on my, the algorithm, my algorithm on uh, TikTok, it's, and I'm not a conspiracy nut 
I, I'm not interested in any of that stuff. But I am interested in ghosts and aliens and mm -hmm. UFOs. Why not? Why wouldn't you be? I mean, no. people are very snobby about it. Why not? I mean, people purporting to have, you know, uh, uh, footage of an alien or a Sasquatch. Or what's quite big on there is um, gnomes. <laughs> oh, really? I kid you not. From South America. You look them up. This really? man found a gnome. And, and I genuinely, I'm just digressing for a bit, but I genuinely cannot believe that all these people are faking this stuff. It, you know, there's some shitty footage from somewhere in Indonesia, in some horrible dirt track place. I'm not being racist. That's what I'm looking at. A of horrible course. little tiny dirt track of a road with a, mm -hmm. with a horrible house. Yeah. And someone has filmed what looks like a gnome or a grey <laughs> alien, a great grey, or a, a UFO. And, and, you know, when I tell my wife or other people, they go, oh, they faked it. And you go, really? <laughs> Who's faked it what? here? Yeah, why? And why? Yeah. I, I, I don't believe anyone's faked that. I don't believe that someone had the capability to sit down, particularly as they live in that house. Mm. And I tell you what we're going to do. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to we're gonna fake this. I'm a whiz with Photoshop. I've got a friend <laughs> up in Soho who can... No, they haven't, have they? They don't have any of that stuff. I've got a friend who used to work for ITV. I tell you what, I'll send it to him. We'll make a mint with this. No, they've seen something and it looks like a bloody Sasquatch or an alien or a gnome. Yeah. So yeah. I'm reading all this stuff and my wife is invariably going, this is absolutely true, you know, sort of, Oh, there's a really fascinating thing about James Joyce. I'm like, oh, God, turn it up. Has he seen an alien? <laughs> Show me a bloody alien. I don't want to hear about James Joyce. It's going to require some effort from me. This That's what the story's the about. Morning. James Joyce saw a gnome. <laughs> yeah. What if he did? He might have written slightly more interesting plays. Maybe. Anyway. So, anyway. Are they these garden gnomes? No, they're like <laughs> mystical. Okay, I get it now. I'm going to send you what I'm talking about. Please and do. I defy you to say that that is some sort of green screen, trick photography, oh, digital, painted in bollocks. It's not. <laughs> it looks like, an, and it's alive. It's not animated. It's a thing someone's caught and a shaky camera, you're a big close up. Okay. That's, that's Cause, a gnome. Because I, I was always expecting, like, the description you gave, like this rundown yeah. place. For, and then it's yeah. just a, a garden gnome with a fishing rod, like a, <laughs> it's a pristine, no, it's a alive. pristine one that's there. It, it's alive. It's and then, alive. Then the uf, Good then boy. the UFO stuff. It's 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 endless amounts of UFO stuff. And that's I mean, funny. I suppose what's slightly more frightening is the fact that it's not even UFO stuff. It's of this world, and it's some sort of terrible spy satellite, mm. absolute state of the art warmongering. Uh, machine that that's mm -hmm. out fox everyone no one's seen it before and it's completely top secret and that's what we're seeing i mean it could be that which is arguably more terrifying than some friendly true. slightly odd mushroom headed aliens turning up very true but um there's loads of this stuff out there and nice. um anyway i start watching william shatner and some of the footage he took supposedly mm. up there I'm telling you now, he didn't go. Or at least if he did go, the silly old sod was taken for a spin round <laughs> Alton Towers in a, some sort of dark, dark, you know. He was on Space Mountain. Some, some sort of Space Mountain midnight run style thing where you can't see anything. Oh, man. And the silly old sod has come back. They even sent him up there in that thing that looked like a knob for a joke. They brought him back and he's been in tears. And Elon Musk has gone back in the office, you know. Pissing himself. Gone. <laughs> silly, silly old sod. I got my revenge. So I've been the... Yeah, yeah. So I... I hated Star Trek growing up. Yeah. Um... So so I've been looking at that too. But I'm, I'm very, very... I was so appalled by what's happened earlier in the week that I just spent the day looking at that. Yeah, I don't blame mm. you. I really don't blame you. Yeah. It'd just be nice to think that if there was life out there, they wouldn't behave how... How oh. our, our important people are behaving right They now. wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. They've got more class, I Yeah. Think. Definitely. Well, you wouldn't catch an alien. I don't think. I think an alien would probably stick to the COVID rules. Completely. And I think Sue Gray, you know, that Sue Gray is a Gray. 
They, that's that's oh. what aliens. Some of the aliens in there. Yeah. Sue Gray. She is actually gray. from is a different alien? planet. She's a Gray. Yeah, yeah. She's that makes gray. more sense now. Yeah, Jeez. I might ask my mum about that. Whether she gray. noticed her at yeah. any time looking lizard-like. Yeah. My mum, when she was at social services with her, mm. did she ever see her morphing into something else? Mm. Did she go out into the car park after work and try and beat the rush hour in her hover? Yeah. Did was hover, she eating rats park? like in V? Remember that old series V? Is that what they did? The, the yeah, aliens. They, they, I wouldn't they, put they, it past. I, I wouldn't put it past. Them. Yeah. Yeah. You you yeah. watch. I mean, I think V is probably more of a documentary now because they used to like take the face off and there was a lizard underneath. They would eat rats. Yeah. Haunted yeah. me as a kid. That. Mm. Mm. Remember that. And also, Phil Cool used to do a very good impression of it on his show. Phil Cool was fantastic. What happened to I him? I did a gig with him. Well, I tell you what happened to him. I tell you exactly what happened. This is true. Now, this is true. Good. Because I did a gig with him at. I've got a feeling it was Preston, but I might be wrong. I think it was Preston. The Preston Guild, which is a thing that happens every 20 years. And I was doing Barry from Watford there. Mm -hmm. I was on with Tony Christie, and I'm fairly certain Phil Cool was on. And I think, and I. I hope I'm not speaking out of line. I think he had um, med uh, medical issues and he may have had a heart problem. I see. And I think that's what took him away. Now, if that's wrong, I apologise, but I'm almost certain that's, that's what happened. But he was unbelievable. He was Phil great, Gordon, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, the, the face, those faces, that elasticated face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bloody amazing. Yeah. I used, to love, I used to love watching that with my dad. He used to, yeah. Evening. yeah. It was a great show. I don't remember. You were too young. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably oh, God, I keep forgetting how old I am. You young people. Yeah, I keep things. getting reminded how old I am, and I keep saying things like that. Do you know Do you know um, Dan Skinner, who I do um, Angelos and Barry with? Mm -hmm. He plays at Angelos Epithemia. Yeah, yeah. Now, he told me, he, claimed, he's, he turned 49, I think it was yesterday, right? Mm. I don't believe he's 49. I'll tell you why, because I'm 54. Mm. I've turned 54 recently. I know it's hard to believe. It is hard to believe. But bless you. You look older. He and and I come out with stuff that I saw in the 70s. Yeah. When I was born in the 60s, it's incredible to, to believe that, to know that. And I would come out with stuff that I saw in the early 70s, and Dan seems to know it. Mm. And I will test him, and I'll say something about, I don't know, Dick Emery or something i saw or, or mike yarwood i was a big fan of mike yarwood growing up and i'd say something and dan knows about it and i go dan there is no way <laughs> you would know that reference that i just said if you were 49 i mean there's no way it's it's weird because i'm i'm 43 next next uh, month oh don't show off yeah sorry about that i don't yeah and um i know mike mike yarwood i i know it and you know yeah. It's uh, yeah. what was the one? <laughs> Dick Emery. Yeah, yeah, and no, Dick, Emery, Dick yeah. Emery. Yeah, exactly. So there's still references, but uh, I suppose so. But there'll be something very specific or a oh, song really? with a lyric from the early seventies. Mm. No, not a particularly famous song. And he remembers the moon landings, that kind of thing. That that never happened either. If it's anything yeah. like, if it's anything like William Shatner, that's like the bollocks <laughs> and all. So, but, it's just but, some uh, room yeah. that everyone goes in whenever they go to space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining like you, you know the old films where it would just be um, a projected background of a car, so they'll be driving yeah. in the car on the roads, yes. and it'll and it'll just be constantly. Yeah. It, that's what I'm picturing. They've sent him in just a posh, yeah. posher version of that. Yeah, a centrifugal. If you go to Hendon RAF Museum mm -hmm. and, and a variety of other things, you can go in a virtual reality Chinook helicopter or something. Oh well, there we go. Everyone knows that's all it is. Shatner has been wheeled in the silly old sod in his in his Star Trek tunic, no doubt. And they've gone, you know, someone's put in a couple of dimes in the slot. <laughs> the chair is starting. There's even a recorded warning to put the team on. There's a couple of kids with him and their moms yeah. Yeah. with with you know on, on a part you know on a kids party with some balloons. And they've but, gone stand by for takeoff. Don't tell him. Don't tell. I mean, of course, and the Shatner, seats had, have Shatner had to do all that kind of rocking himself, usually. And oh, it's yeah. probably getting rocked that, himself. Yeah, that's why they got him in. They knew he'd, they knew he'd enhance Instinctively the experience. Do it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And you come out the end, 
Yeah. And sure enough, you are at RAF Hendon. They go and show you a, a uh, one of the Wright brothers early attempts. Go yeah. buy the gift shop. It hasn't occurred to them. There's a gift shop where you can buy all manner of <laughs> RAF memorabilia. It doesn't really seem s- to occur to the bloke. Did they sell him a photograph of him on the <laughs> They did. On the show? <laughs> he got a T-shirt saying, "I went to space." <laughs> yeah. I went, to, I went to space. Hendon NW3, whatever. Yeah. Captain Kirk went to space, and all I got was his T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, he's moving around, doing that thing from side to side. You can't yeah. see him; he's he's blurred. Uh, and in the in the blurred. foreground is Elon Musk going, "Look at me, twerk." <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's it? as good a theory as any. <laughs> Yeah. He had a nice yeah. day out. He did right. have a nice day out, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like Hendon Museum. I mean, that's something <clears> my wife is not really into. She thinks that's sort of imperialist or something. Okay. I think, no, I like it, seeing some planes. And there's invariably yeah. some some photos of some RAF Battle of Britain hero, and you read about the heroics. She do not like all that. Too left wing. You'd Too like left-wing. where we live, because um, where we live, we have a... Um, They've got tanks everywhere. Yeah, tanks everywhere, spitfires flying over all the time. Uh, Where are you, Afghanistan? (laughs) (laughs) At worst, Ashford in Kent. Oh, Christ, they love it down there, don't they? They do. They love all that down there, goose-stepping up and down the high street. Yeah, Yeah. you can't get enough. Oh, I love it. I've counted quite a few few tanks. Mm. Yeah. And there was a, a, well, it was a, we heard it more than we saw it. Oh, yeah. But there was like a mock steam train just going down the road. So they've, oh. I don't know if it must have obviously been some sort of vehicle car sort of thing. Mm. But they had like this, the steam and the whistles and it was chugging and just, just blocking yeah. the traffic. So there's a whole queue of cars behind it as they're just going along the road. I, I have no idea what that was about. And it, I, I know I don't understand this thing just because it looks old fashioned doesn't mean it's good. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's old fashioned. Oh, it's traditional. It's just it's a uh, steam. It's like yes, I know we've progressed since then. Yeah, we can send an old X nineteen sixties TV star into a simulator in Hendon. Yeah, for example. Man we put has a moved man. On. We put a man in a studio that looked like the moon. Yeah, he said simulator. one giant man step man. for man, mm. one small leap. To Edgeware McDonald's for yep. another man is yeah. after when he came out. Does he anyone said. want But anyway, to listen. Can can I just say this mm. that where I live near Watford, which is also like Ashford and Kent, has a touch of the old. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what you mean. What's his name? Right. Touch of the old uh, Brexit's about it. Yeah. Um, what was it? What's that guy who used to be the BNP Griffin? Nick Griffin. Touch oh, the old yeah. Nick Griffins about it. That's a name I've heard um, in the world. Yeah. The uh, the I'm being very careful now because one of my neighbours is going to hear this. <laughs> yeah. But where I live, someone has done a mural on one of the walls of an old sort of shire horse mm. pulling uh, a cart, and the council were up in arms about it, saying mm. it's ill fitting for the area, which is a lot of Edwardian houses. I call it the Crouch End of Watford, where I live. Mm-hmm. It's got a sort of Slightly artis, artis, artisanal, what's the word? Artisanal, um, artisanal feel to artisanal. it. Artisanal. 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 artisanal feel about yes. it. Yes. We'll it's full that. of, there's a few actors. Mark Bonner used to be one of my neighbours down the road mm. and there's composers and, yeah. you, you know, live the there. tour manager of Coldplay used to live, oh, I you see. know, around the corner. Anyway, but where I am in Watford, it's a bit like that. Mm. And the council have said he's not allowed to paint this mural on the wall. It's got to go. And, to be honest, I'm not mad on it. Really? And and everyone's a bit like, it's traditional. It's a shy horse with a cart. And, ju- and I think, all right, but just because it is old-fashioned, yeah. <laughs> so what? Just because it's old-fashioned doesn't mean it's good. No, yeah. exactly. And it's not me, if anyone's listening, it is not me who complained about it. I, I'm indifferent. <laughs> but... Just on the side, just because it's old fashioned doesn't mean it's any good. Yeah, and it's there's... also spray painted, which sort of takes away the old fashionedness. Of it. Yeah, like if if it, if they mean it's been there since say like the nineteen twenties or something, then okay, that's old fashioned <laughs> yeah. and it's that's a part of history there. Yeah. But they just drew yeah, an old fashioned, like it's like drawing. 
I don't know, someone ab- abusing a child in like a workhouse or something. That's old fashioned and traditional. But you're not I gonna... think that probably everyone would be up in arms I about think that it. if that was well, It's a bit w- more controversial yeah. than a shy horse and cart. <laughs> you say yeah. everyone, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... The judge would the, the magistrate. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, um, it, I know what you mean, though. It's, um, it's a lot. Tr- I think when people don't have anything else to say, they try to excuse things by saying tradition and that's yeah. how it is. That's how it's like. No, things can change and yeah. progress, and mm. we can let that go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some things we should. Exactly. I saw a shy horse on my tour in December. There you so, go. What you was your tour? Horse? Yeah, we were in the Peak District, and. Um, well, we had to take a, di- a, d- a detour, so we went right up into the hills. And, uh, yeah, there's all these horses, and then this massive Shire horse. I've never seen one in the flesh before. Oh, That's yeah. my story. There you go. What, what, what was the tour, more to the point? Oh, it was, it was, a, was the, uh, the 12 Days of Christmas. It was like a homage to Morecambe and Wise. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it's, it's, nice. it's a silly little, it's only an hour-long little thing. Family and show, a little family it? show for Christmas. Oh, and, how lovely. Yeah. Right. You're not from the Peaks, are you? No, Thanks. no, no. Where are you from? I'm from Lincoln. Oh yeah, I know. I've done a lot of jobs in Lincoln with Comedy Hotspot. Yeah, yeah. You were actually uh, well. You did the um, that Darren Dutton film, Local Man Lost oh, in yeah, Forest. That's right. Yes, another one of our yeah, yeah. shared credits. Oh yeah, like Big Field. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually forgot about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was going to come and see your film that, but I had to go home. <laughs> oh well, don't worry. I, I I was doing the show that night. You were, weekend, so I quickly, quickly knocked that one out. Yeah, yeah. What, what a fine job you did, it. sir. What a fine job. Oh. Oh, well, I only had one line. That was Dublin. That's all I had to say in that. that was Dublin. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember Dublin. Yeah. Um, and Lewis is in that. Oh god, we're all connected. Is he? He does the voice of the. Give me your phone. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, lovely. Give me your phone. It's a piece of shit. Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah. the, it's the same old people in every. We keep we keep it's hearing same Lewis same everywhere, old. and I it's, know. It, it, it's off. It, we just go. That's Lewis. It's everywhere. I know. And the just he's absolutely everywhere. everywhere at the moment. And yeah, yeah. Well, what's it yeah, like working with him? Funny. What's he like? Oh, he's great. Yeah, I imagine he's he is. really great, and he's really good value. You know. He used to do my show a lot at the Hundred Club. He's this Barry from Watford bingo show mm. in oh, Oxford yeah. Street, and uh, he would be, you know, chatting in the dressing room and sort of funny and, you know, effortless with these voices. It's just it's a kind yeah. of freakish talent. It's just like I don't know what it is. Some sort of um, photographic memory. Mm. And when he'll when he I always think when he reports something that happened. And this guy came in and said this. You know that is exactly how the bloke said it. Observant. And he, he probably used exactly the same words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like watching a video of yeah. something that happened. Yeah. So he's great fun, and he's even more fun when he's had a couple of drinks <laughs> in, a, in a hotel bar afterwards. I bet. You know? I bet. So uh, when we do this tour, I think it's going to be great fun. I mean, it's a lot of work to do beforehand, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's going to be really lovely to be on stage with him. And then, you know, half the fun, I think, I don't know how you feel about this, but touring it's about five minutes from the end of the show thinking lovely in about an hour's time i'll be in a nice hotel bar somewhere you can put all this behind me yeah have a little drinky it it, so it, it lovely it, it depends really because <laughs> on the um the last tour i was on the first weekend we were staying in digs so we went in the hotel yeah anything. and the first place they got us in was um tory mp's mansion Right. I was there for beautiful. two nights. Beautiful that place. Of it. I 12th bet. century place. Beautiful. But yeah, yeah I was in a, a Tory MP's mansion for two nights. I was staying in the Good chapel. Fun. Really? What a laugh, though. How many other people were in it? Just one. Um, it was just two other people. There's three of us. But you had a good old laugh. Yeah, it was all right. It was good, it was good fun. And we were obviously, it was like a very minimal set, but we had to set it up yeah. each time and, you know, take it down yeah. and stuff every night. and. So that added yeah, to okay. it, but yeah, it was it was oh, all right. I, I wasn't particularly keen on being away from home uh, for like no. most of December, but you know. Yeah, yeah, I it know. Was all right. I know. It was all right. But the clearing up is a real bore, isn't it? I had it to is. do a lot of that in the last. It is. 
I hate like it. you had these massive letters that said Clint, and they oh, yeah. were just so bloody heavy, yeah. and you know putting them in the van. And I remember my my uh, stage manager Alex saying to me, he was really annoyed. We went to this one venue, I won't name it, and they didn't really help us do the get out. They're quite keen to help you get in, and then once the show's done, it's like well, we've done that now. Come on, I'd get off get off home or whatever. And so it was left to us to kind of lug this heavy stuff, and I. This was, I think, the first time in my life I thought, God, I must be getting old. Alex saying, it's just such a cheek. There you are, no disrespect, but a 53-year-old man, he sold out their venue, they've let, let you lug all this stuff. I'm like, oh no, for the first time, my physical ability, <laughs> the first time in my life, You'd my have physical to say ability my has been called into question. <laughs> yeah, that's never happened before that someone's called me out for being too old to lift up the props. Do you want to like, see while I do this? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know whether to laugh or cry because quite honestly, I wanted to go, yeah, you're quite right. I'll go and sit in the bloody cab. <laughs> you know. Hurry up, I'm so, getting uh, cold. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, um, yeah, I hate the clearing up. Oh, God, yeah. what a bore. Not a fan, not a fan of that. Not a fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think of the first time I met Lewis um, was when we did Jeremy by an Agony Uncle. Um, oh, yeah. I loved meeting him, though. That was great. And I, I, great as guy. you said to Alex, like, Lewis would be so good to chat to yeah. Bob like in, in that oh my episode. god you could just listen to it's I, fantastic imagine he has so many stories and things Completely. yeah and and also some of some greatest hits I like him to go through again one of them when he worked with Danny LaRue it's one of my favourites oh really oh. and I'm I, I, do, do that bit do that bit when he says you know it's a bit like that <laughs> Yeah, let's do Friday. Are we on to? We're on to let's Friday. Let's do Friday. Yes, we've done the fun part. that's going to be edited out. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, Friday. What was that like? Friday is well. I I'm trying to lay off the booze a bit. Mm. I was very hurt, but I looked back at a video which is available on Next Up Comedy of my tour. Oh yes, where it's a streaming service. You pay, and my. My tour Stratospheric was on there. Oh, nice! And uh, it's um, all beautiful shot. There's lot, you know, various cameras, uh, and there's a camera on the stage hiding behind some scenery. It's beautifully shot over two days, so you pick the best bits. Although, as it happened, it was just the first night we used really. Mm. But when I watch it back, I'm in a sequin flight suit. Yeah. I look so hideous <laughs> in it. It is so awful and doesn't hide anything. Mm. And I didn't really realise. And I also do a thing, I do it as Barry and as Clinton, where I deliberately arch my back and stick my stomach forward. And it just does me no oh. favours. I mean, I think it's probably funny. I'll do anything to be funny. But I just look terrible oh, and well um just remember you're 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 being clinton and clinton looks terrible that's probably where you should leave it i know but i mean i know ne- i wasn't always like this i used to be young and beautiful i know I'm getting older and, and terrible yeah. but um i so i'm trying to lay off the booze i'm trying to lay off the food but a friday at our house Mm. is often I will volunteer to go down to Marks and Spencer's or Waitrose with a suitcase, get some nice food, Thanks. some nice booze, yeah. maybe some quality dip, mm-hmm. uh, nice bit of pudding, maybe even something like a uh, uh, smoked salmon terrine mm. or something mm. nice for nibbling. Oh yeah, some nice water biscuits, some cheese. <laughs> so so middle age. So you have a feast. <laughs> <laughs> Friday's a Christmas. Have a feast. <laughs> oh, it really is. But it's so nice after, you know, my wife's a school teacher. It's very difficult for her, uh, and you know, I don't really deserve it. I've done nothing all week, <laughs> dicking around. But it's so lovely to kind of relax and uh, yeah. really go to town on a Friday. Saturday is sort of always slightly. Yeah, a bit of an anticlimax. We don't really. I go to football, see football quite a lot. Don't get home in time for a really great evening. But Friday night, it's all about the promise of the weekend, isn't it? Oh, we see, I like that. That's kind of because when you're younger, Friday is the most exciting Friday night. It's like, yes, here we go. Yeah, and you've still got isn't that. it? You, you've still got that. Very house. much so. It's Very just slightly different. So, but I don't really deserve it. I don't. I don't work hard enough. Oh come on! One of the hardest working men I mean, in entertainment. You, I know, but, it, uh, but don't you ever feel you that? 
Yeah, well, exactly. And I bloody kept working all the way through that as well. Mm. But don't you think, do you ever think talking of that, Alex uh, and Emmy, when, you know, there are people who do a proper job? I Honestly, I'm not being, this is no fake humility. I mean, I do work. I'm very industrious. I can't yeah. sit still. But there are people who do a proper day's work and they go out and they work nine to five and of a Friday, they deserve a Friday. Yes. And part of me thinks it would be nice to do that a bit like when you're at school, you've had a bit of a tough week. And then, as you say, you have that Friday, which is the promise of the weekend. You bloody deserve it. Mm. You know, I find yeah. quite often my weekends and nights uh, and, and there's no rigid timetable. I could be working all the time. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I mean, because I, I, I did it for so long. It's only when really it's only when the lockdown happened and I started working from home and I realized I couldn't do the job that I was doing telemarketing. Yeah, <sighs> um, I couldn't oh, do that God. from home. So I had to look at other avenues. So I've basically yeah. been a free. It's, it's been the first time since I've started working that I've actually been free, as it were. Yeah. And not tied down yeah. to a nine yeah. to five. Because even when I was doing John Holmes's show on talk radio, um, I was still working. I was I was in an office. So I was literally like, I just oh, need the break God. at three just to do the stupid phone call. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it yeah. all on the side. But now, yeah. for the first time, I'm writing and I'm getting paid for it. And I'm, you know, that's kind of great, on your that, own isn't schedule. it? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Emmy, what do you do? Um, Well, by day, I, I'm a graphic designer and artist. Oh, my God. Brilliant. So I do yeah, have a proper. nine to five uh, sort of thing. But yeah. I, all I'm doing is just moving pixels around and stuff, like which I find for me. I don't know, I suppose yeah. sim similar to you, but not quite, is that for me, that's just like easy. I'm not really doing anything particularly stressful or harsh. Like, yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. I used to work in the Metropolitan Police and like the stuff that I would Did you? read and deal with then is <gasps> obviously way more <laughs> serious than me. Just can, yeah. you, can you just make it pop more? And I get stressed out when someone asks, asks me to make it pop more because that means nothing. Yeah. Not everything can pop. Right. Um, but yeah. I, I think, well, if that's the most I could get stressed out at work, then I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, our yeah, Fridays yeah, are yeah. pretty uneventful. I sit in the other room. Emily plays Dungeons and Dragons yeah, on a Friday night. Yeah, that's my night. Friday treat. That's it. Oh God! But it's lovely being at home together, isn't it? Isn't that? A it's great all thing? right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got separate rooms. Yeah. Hmm? Well, I have a separate room because I'm at night because I'm snoring so terribly. It's mm. unbearable. Mm. But I, so I'm in here during the day. I mean, in fact, she's waiting for me now. Yeah, it's all right. We'll quickly move on to the weekend. Football, it takes up all my time. I'm a season ticket holder at Wolverhampton Wanderers, which is the most ridiculous thing because uh, I was a massive QPR fan. I live not, for, well, I live near QPR. My uncle was deputy chairman of QPR. All right. Where I'm sitting in this office now, I've got a uh, Cly Clive Allen's FA Cup shirt from 1982. Wow. It mean anything to you, you young people, but it means a lot to me. <laughs> and um, one day I stuck a picture of QPR versus Wolves on the fridge, and my son, who was seven, went for the bloody wrong ones. And now I'm a season ticket holder at Molyneux, oh. where oh. Wolves play. <laughs> oh, So I go up there all the time, but I really love it. And it's a lovely thing, me and my lad, you know, sort of... Um, you know, it's a lovely bonding thing of a Saturday. And uh, he's now at Manchester University, Manchester Met University. So he comes down and we meet. And it's the saddest thing to the end of the football, go down to the station. And I say, see you later. And I go one way and he goes the other. Yeah. And yeah. when I think I've been taking up this as he was seven mm. and he's now, you know, nearly 19. So it's desperately sad. Yeah. Really. I was a bit depressed on my own going home. Oh, so football, football, football. I, I love football. Well, that's I good. love everything about it. The continual soap opera. Never really got into it, but... <laughs> well, maybe you don't have that sense of competition. I don't. That no. tribal thing. No, no. It's all tribal. I mean, I've got the sense of competition silly. when it comes to friends that I know that are doing really well in the business. Um, but that's oh, about it, as far as it goes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I try, yeah. I try and fake it. Like, oh, well done. In my side, I'm like, right. Oh, yeah, of course. Me too. 
that. You know, They're everyone's like that. They are, right? aren't they? They are. Anyway, Actually, I say that. I do know people. Who, I know people who are not remotely like that, and I think, God, I wish I was more like you. <laughs> it's you it's just. I think it's a part of human nature. I think that you know, just the, you yeah. know, the grass is always greener and all that bollocks. Yeah. 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 yeah of course. Anyway. <laughs> Well, uh, what, what a downer to end it on, but we're going to end it <laughs> here. But we are going to end it. We are going to end it. So, Alex, if you're going to rate your week out of a scale of whatever, what would you rate it? I think I would rate this at a 6.7 out of 10. That sounds good. It didn't quite hit, it didn't quite hit the heights, no. but it was quite nice and relaxed. And as I say, it's lovely to be at home. And yeah. it's very cold. And I've got the heating on in my office. There are a lot worse places I could be. Yeah. You, you could be. The adrenaline didn't get going too much this no. week. No, that's that's all right. That's fine. Not I mean, I imagine the adrenaline got a little bit high at the beginning of the week, by the sounds of it. But um, yeah, I yeah yeah yeah. Showed out, finished with but, a feast and football. Yeah, that's all you need. It isn't did it? all it, the Fs. But, but yeah, it was it was exhausting earlier in the week, but it got but it it got less. And what more could you want? On. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Alex. It's been an absolute pleasure, okay. pleasure talking to you. I can't speak today. Perhaps say that That's again, right. because even if you edit it, that is going to sound weird. It is, yes. Well, thank you, Alex, for <laughs> doing the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, Emmy, anything to add? I don't have anything to add. Okay. Well, uh, my thanks again to Alex Lowe. Uh, thanks again to Emily Weber. I've been Alex Sivright, and that was, that was the week that was, was it? Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Mr. Lewis MacLeod in Clinton Baptiste versus Ramon, which will be touring from September until December 2022. For tickets and more information, go to clintonbaptiste.com forward slash live. And be sure to listen to Clinton Baptiste's Paranormal Podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. I thank you. <laughs>